let's take it a little bit into the modern because one of the things that we have seen in recent years a little bit more is kind of like that interaction of like how do we deal with these kind of medical issues and I think you mentioned in the introduction and I kind of mentioned it also as we kind of communicated and kind of setting this up we had this uh, I think it was PBS that made Mercy Street and as kind of a TV show so about a hospital during the Civil War so it's this yeah. Um, it's not the moment of the heroic fighting that you get in like Gettysburg or Gods and Generals right. or these other movies, or it's not the political narrative that Spielberg does with Lincoln. It's this nit gritty community that has a hospital in town, the doctors acting here. Um, I mean, I have to admit that one of the most fascinating, I haven't seen all of it, but one of the most fascinating aspects in it was that amputation scene of like, you, yeah. you usually see just, Oh, the doctor breaks out the saw and starts moving it and the limb goes off and here was this I think it was like 10 minute drawn out of like going yeah. through the book of like how do you do it right. um in part kind of what did you think about it having done more on the medical and was there moments where you felt like this there could have been done more even considering the invisible injuries, the kind of yeah. potentially alcoholism that doctors and patients suffer from the kind of recruit Recuperation that soldiers go through. Yeah, I um, I really enjoyed Mercy Street. I mean, I'm I'm also just kind of like a Civil War dork, so like I was like, yes, PBS series on a Civil War hospital, and it's got Ted from How I Met Your Mother. Like this is amazing, right? Um, and a romantic subplot. I mean, give me a break. It's like everything I've ever dreamed of. Yeah, it, it really was. And so I was sad to see it go after just two seasons. I, I would have loved to see where they went from there. Mm -hmm. um, in many ways, the show was very impressive. They did mm -hmm. work with historians, um, like for instance, Jim Downs, they worked with a great deal to um, make sure that the stories that they were telling were rooted in reality right they were rooted in things that actually happened for instance there's um a, a very powerful scene i think it's the the first episode of the second season i only know that because i think i just showed it to my students recently ah. i don't have every episode memorized i promise <laughs> um where um it, it shows a a black woman from the north coming down to, to work as a nurse mm. and the first thing that she notices is the contraband camp where there's a smallpox and um, a smallpox um, epidemic yeah. kind of infestation, right? Sort of uh, an epidemic, sort of brewing, mm -hmm. and she's trying to make the argument that the smallpox epidemic is going to affect everyone else. It's not mm -hmm. just going to be limited to these these black bodies. Um, but that kind of storyline about smallpox and contraband camps, you know, yeah. was directly influenced by Jim Downs's work mm -hmm. on you know in, in his book Sick from Freedom. And so in that way, it was really impressive. Um, my favorite true story in the show was in, I think, the f very first episode um, where a soldier comes in and he's gripping the flag. I think it was mm -hmm. an American flag. He's like gripping it and they're trying to get it out of his hands and he won't let go of it. And they're trying to figure out why. It turns out he's literally glued to the flag with his own blood. And I said, oh, for Pete's sake. I mean give me a break. This is, this is ridiculous. This is like, is that possible? Right? Extreme symbolism, right? Um, and I think Megan Kate Nelson on, on Twitter actually said like cause of death, extreme symbolism, <laughs> which I just have never let go of. I thought that was so brilliant. And then the Civil War Medicine Museum chimed in and said, oh no, that's a real story. Like <laughs> they got that from their archives. Um, and so in that way, they worked very hard to make it as realistic as they could. Where I had a problem with Mercy Street, and it's, you know, it's the kind of problem that historians find with anything that's pop culture related, right? We, we problem, it's our job to problematize things. Yeah. And so while I really enjoyed the show, something that I found very striking was that it recreated the narrative that we have in many histories of medicine that history, the history of disability and was in some ways created to fix, right? Mm -hmm. the, the overarching narrative of traditional histories of medicine is that doctors are heroes, they're saviors, 
They're here to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. And you are the problem, right? You mm -hmm. injured person pose the problem. And now the hero is going to come in and they're going to fix you up and they're going to send you on your way. Right. And so we mm -hmm. have a, a story of heroes. Now, granted, they worked to try to create the anti-hero by making yeah. the surgeon a Dragon morphine addict, addict or something, yeah. opium addict. Um, um, and so they do try to undo that in a certain extent. But um, what, what it did was it reduced the patients to problems to be solved. And that was something that I worked very hard in my book to try to undo, was mm -hmm. by trying to take the patient perspective rather than the, the surgeon perspective. Mm -hmm. the, the, the surgeon is always going to be the authority figure, the, the, the figure of power, right? Um, and I found that the show kind of replicated that mm -hmm. problematic narrative. Now, how it would have done it differently to tell the story to, to make it a compelling television show, I'm not totally sure. I mean, it's the same thing that, say, MASH does, right? It's, it's difficult to undo that storyline yes. if you want it to be set in a hospital, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have every patient be the new narrator of the I mean, It's right. just too complicated. But I found that really fascinating because it, in some ways, encapsulated the way that we've told the story of Civil War mm -hmm. disability up to this point and what I'm trying to undo in my yeah. book is by trying to center the patient and center the disabled person and their experience, their feelings, whatever, and de-center the power figures, right? Yeah. So so that's kind of was ended up being my take on Mercy Street, even though I still really enjoyed it. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think it's a great thing to have because it offers us a different perspective that we don't mm -hmm. have to every time show a battle scene from a movie, Absolutely. other ways to now communicate the different aspects of the Civil War. I mean, I personally actually did that when I finally got to teach the American Civil War as an upper level class. I was like, no, I'm not talking about battles. There's too yeah. much other great stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do one or two little things. We need to talk about campaigns, but you know, yeah. there's politics, there's the West, there's African-American stories, contraband right. stories, there's a medical side, all of it that just makes it so much more fascinating. Yeah, and in that sense, Mercy Street was a really important addition to Civil yeah. War pop culture because it is so dominated with the a particular military story, right? It's still telling a military story. They're all military surgeons, but yeah. it doesn't fit into what most people who are interested in the Civil War think of as the military story, right? They think of boxes on a battlefield, moving around. You know, I always think of the, the animated map, the old animated map at Gettysburg where yeah. the little lights would flash, you know? That's how we think about the military history of the war. And this was trying to tell a new military history of the war, um, which I thought was really important. 